Um, shout out to, of course, Amir and to Shah and the team and Joe, especially coming in at what four or five weeks' notice. Um, some uh, inspirational corridor talk as well on the way to the ring. I've not seen that before. It was, I was pumped. Oh, were you know, there? Yeah, I was there. Oh, I, was, I didn't know you that. You were there. You were in the zone. <laughs> oh, okay. Amir, but I didn't know that. Fantastic to have Amir back. Over to you guys for questions for Amir and Joe. Where does that rank, Amir? Um, you know, obviously it was it was two years at the ring. Um, I'm not gonna say, oh yeah, it was it was one of my best performances. I mean, my performance wise, it was a bad performance, but it's not like I, would, I beat a world champion. You know I mean, I know there's better fights out there for me, so this is another fight in the office uh, that we put in the bag, and you know, just move on from here. Uh, I took all the experience out of this fight. It was just nice to um, train with Joe, who's the trainer, who's my new head trainer, so getting to know each other a little better. Also Tony Brady with all the conditioning that we did for the fight. So I know you know the team I have is just right. Um, given that given the hand test, which was another thing, but I mean Legreco come to win. Um, you know, no disrespect. I mean he had over ten weeks of training for this fight. He looked in good shape at the press at the weigh-in at the press conference. He was very confident. So um, you know I, I thought probably one of the best, probably the best Legreco there was to fight out there because normally he only gets like two three weeks notice for fights. But um, we're back. The main thing is I'm back now, back with a big bang, and I want to mix in with the big names in boxing. And I think today I did send a statement. Whoever they put in front of me, if I hit him with a shot like that, they would have gone down. So now it's time to kind of me and Eddie sit down next week, hopefully, and see some big names out there, and let's start getting them in. Who would you like to see next, Amir? Sorry. Who would you like to see next? Um, you know, the, the divisions, uh, the 147 divisions, amazing. Um, I, I, the way I made for this fight was quite easy. Um, making 147 is not a problem. There's some huge names uh, from the Thurman to, to the Spences. Uh, there's, there's world titles to be won in the welterweight division. So I'm just going to wait and see. I mean, it's always changing. But look, I'd like to fight Broner. Broner's now, he's going to be fighting tonight. So it'd be nice to see the winner of Broner and Vargas because I think that would be a good fight at 147. I'm here. Your best man, Kelbrook, he yeah. was there. What did you feel about him? Um Ah, uh, you know what? It's uh, it's, uh, end of the boxing is a business, and Kells, uh, he's a good fighter. You know, he he he's at one fifty four. Like I said, I'm still campaigning at one four seven. When we when we sit down with Eddie, we know when the right choice move move is gonna be to one fifty four. Then or maybe a catch weight, then the fight's gonna happen. But look, I'm not running scared. I think my 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 performance proves it. Uh, today, I'm not one of the fighters to ever be scared of anyone. If I went up to fight the likes of like Canelo, if, and and take his best shot, so you know. Someone like Kell Brook, I think um, it's always good to have that rivalry. And I think if it ever happens, it'll, it'll be big. But at the moment, um, I want to sit with Eddie and see what my future is going to be. If it's going to be at 147, who the names are. I want to win a world title at 147 first before I start going up. So, you know, I'm still, uh, I feel at the peak of my career. Uh, like I was saying the other day, I feel better now than I was when I was 28. I've got the speed, got the explosiveness, got the power. And I think you guys saw it today. Uh, yeah, I don't know. No, definitely. I mean, you know, there's there, there's levels in boxing, and I knew that. Um, well, I knew that it was going to be a tough fight against Le Greco, but I was a better fighter than him. Um, and if I use my skills, I fought better oppositions. But you know, he tried to get under my skin uh, at the press conference, and he thought that's his only way of beating me. You know, by getting under my skin. Um, I'm a lot wiser now. I'm older. I don't make the same mistakes I used to make. So it's all about just learning from those fights and getting better as a fighter. And I'm still learning, you know, I'm still learning. And like I said, there's some big fights out there for me now. Uh, I know this was a quick stoppage. We didn't really, I didn't really get to spend much time in the ring, but I mean, I don't get paid for overtime. So I thought, let's get over and done with. When I caught him with that one shot, I thought, let's get him out. I mean, could you just give us a, any mention of the corridor talk there? Could you give us an insight into what the set that made you come out so fast? You know, um, Joe's very good at keeping me focused, uh, even in the ring. Uh, at times he went, never, never wanted me to take my eye off my opponent, like Reco, and even at times I was feeling uncomfortable. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got, I've got, I've got Jaws shouting in my ear saying, "Make sure you keep looking at him. Don't take your eye off him." Uh, uh, so yeah, um, but I think you know it's all mental. You know, I'm at that level now where I know physically 
Um, I train like Tony, physically trains me uh, very good. Joe gets me in physical shape for boxing. The main thing is that mentally being right in the mind, you know, going into a fight mentally right. Um, that's where I used to go wrong. I used to let things get to me. I never was focused. Um, so I think what Joe's bringing to the table is we're also, also bringing that focus as well as bringing a good game plan for the fight. In the first fight in Britain for five years, what did you make of the reception you got when you came? Oh, brilliant, yeah. The, the crowd was amazing. Um, I just want to thank the Liverpool fan base. Um, but people from all over came and uh, I remember looking at my window from my from my hotel room and there were thousands of people in the car in the, in, in downstairs car park at the hotel and they want to see me. I mean, it just makes you happy, you know, after so long, I'm not fought in the UK, the people still come out to see me and want to see me. And I think this was a great way of putting a show on for them. I know it's short, but um, at least I can all go out and have a drink now. Is <laughs> yeah. yourself staying in the UK now for a while? I'd like to, yeah. It just depends what options there are out there. Um, me and Eddie are going to sit down this point in the coming week and we'll see what the options are, what fights are out there for me. And um, if it if it means going to America, then we do that as well. But I like to fight in England more often now. I mean, this is where my home is. Does a quick win like that mean you might be out sooner? Yeah, definitely. I just got Ramadan coming up. So obviously I want to get Ramadan out of the way and then I'll be back in training again. Uh, all that time I spent um, not, not fighting for those two years. I was always in the gym. I was always watching videos. I was always seeing things and... Um, and training and, and helping other fighters and you know working on my mistakes so it wasn't like I was sat home doing nothing so I think that's where Le Greco probably made his biggest mistake because he thought I was sat doing nothing and so he thought he's going to jump on me and he's going to put me under pressure straight away but he, he couldn't do that it feels good to be back right? yeah it feels good to be back man especially in front of a home crowd as well I mean can I just ask did you go in there with a game plan to finish it early no we we were, we was talking me and Joe um, as we walk into the ring he said look just box be smart don't do not do anything if you see opening then go for that big shot and go for the opening but it wasn't even a big shot I was throwing I was throwing I was just letting my combinations go when I caught him with that right hand so it wasn't a shot I tried to knock him out with um, obviously I was a little bit anxious I wanted to kind of let loose um, even before I kind of got comfortable in in the fight he, he, he was done. Was you surprised when he went on the first time? I know it was a good shot I caught him with right on the chin. I caught him with a good flush shot. I think um, a lot of well fighters would have gone down or you know, a 150 pound fighter mm -hmm. would have gone down with that shot. It was a good, I felt the power right through down my arm. I mean, it's the first time I've used that right hand properly and you can see the power's back. Eddie, is your priority Calm Brook? Uh, not really. I mean, look, that fight is huge and after tonight, it's even bigger. But there are massive fights out there for both of them. I mean, you know, they've both got desires to win a world title. Like Amir said, this is a business as well. And we have to look at all the different scenarios. I mean, tonight was about getting a win. I think we're going to look to box in August, end of August. Um, it's just a case of whether we take that big fight next or the one after. Probably I'd like to see him return to the UK again and have a, a step up. People talk about the Greco. People stop him in, in Liverpool today, tweeting me all day. I've got a feeling Amir Khan's going to get knocked out tonight, you know. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, oh, Le Greco's rubbish. He's what he said we, he was. He's not an elite world-class fighter. He's a fringe world-level guy who on 12 weeks prep against a guy who's been out of the ring for two years is a, is a stern enough test. But it was the way that he dismantled it. Mm -hmm. If he would have just gone the 12 rounds and looked a bit sloppy and rusty, to come back after two years and put in a performance like that, that was the statement. It wasn't about necessarily about Amir Khan winning. It was about how he won and how he was showing what he still got. So the Kell Brook fight is a massive fight, massive. But so is Adrian Broner. So is Manny Pacquiao. So is Terence Crawford. So is Keith Thurman. So is Danny Garcia. So it's really about Amir, what Amir wants, the money involved in the fight. This is a business as well. But it was so pleasing to see him return to an arena sold out with that kind of vibrancy. I mean, on the ring walk, it was jumping. With celebrations, I've never seen mm -hmm. an arena go up like that, you know, for a long time. And, and I think he will perform better under that kind of intensity. America's a strange place. I remember when he boxed Devin Alexander. It's a weird, weird atmosphere out there. But over here, it sort of lifts you mm -hmm. and can produce the kind of intensity that he produced in 39 seconds. So, really, honestly, I, the answer is I don't know. But I know that there are half a dozen massive box office fights out there for him. You know people are going to go bananas if you don't make the Brooks fight, don't they? Yeah, but, you know, we you haven't made... That stick, Eddie. For two years, that, that fight <laughs> should have... And, and listen, it should still have... And it's got... That it was... It was... After Amir lost to Canelo and Kel lost to Errol Spence, it became a little bit smaller.
Kelbrook looked great against Rabchenko, it became bigger. Amir Khan looked great against Le Greco, it's become bigger again. So it's just a case of looking at the numbers, taking our time. If that's the correct fight for the team, for everybody, then we'll make the fight. I, 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 there's no secret. Of course I want to see the fight. Yeah. You all want to see the fight. But there are lots of fights out there. And it comes down to, do we want to win a world title? Yes. Do we want to make a lot of money? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> well, I do. You know, I'll speak for you. <laughs> um, because Amir is in, uh, not, not the end of his career, but this is the last... Sort of six, chapter. seven, eight chapters. Yeah, you know, it, so the, the aim is the biggest fights possible, and and like I said, there are a lot of choices. But of course, the British public would like to see that. Fight. <laughs> so you Eddie, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Not next. They're both fighting somewhere. <laughs> get Wilder Joshua done first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that is definitely the first priority, and then we we'll worry about it. Joe, how was it for you? I'm here back in the ring, and you look splendid. I mean, credit to you. I spoke to you before the fight, and we kind of had a chat, and you predicted. That, you know, he's you're working on things that he's not worked on before. Mm. I mean, when he came in the ring, I've never seen him. He looked in good shape. He looked really positive. I think that had a, a mental effect on McGregor because he looked a bit nervous and he just jumped all over him. You really got him worked in the right direction. How do you feel about that? Really? Well, there's a lot to digest in that. But, uh, it, yeah, I mean, first off, you know, we're, we're, I, I'm working with a superior athlete here. He's, he's, he's one of a kind. Um, and I saw that manifest itself in the gym. So I, I, I knew if, if we, and we didn't have a long time, of course, to train, but in that time we really did pack a lot of training in that five weeks. And, uh, you know, Amir's got a lot left. You know, I, I'll, just, I'll just say this. Uh, the, the best is yet to come. And um, it was an incredible crowd tonight. I have to tell you, it was exciting for me. And uh, my experience here has been tremendous. And... I want to thank Eddie and, and, frankly, the Shaw family who treated me just tremendously and the people of Walton and Liverpool. I just had a, I had a great time while we were working. It's always fun if you can work hard uh, and have a great time and still be successful. So, boy, I, I'd love to come back again well, and do it all over again. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a little different, you know, being in the corner and uh, you had Joel saying, keep your eye on him. <laughs> you know, he's never looking at me. You see him, you see him. You see, and I'm thinking, but well, he's not looking back at me. I mean, I wanted him to look back at me to work him out and see, so obviously. But I, I thought you might be looking back at him as well, but you were looking at him, you're looking at me, and I'm thinking, That's right. That's what do right. I do here? Well, <laughs> I, mean? I will tell you, when we came out, he <laughs> was looking at you, and when you started staring him down, no, no, he, he, turned, he, yeah. he turned around. I could see okay. that. I, I think and that's, that's when, part of the game. Yeah, that's when I, I saw that he kind of, you could see the fight was lost. Mm -hmm. But when I was looking that's at him, right. he, was, he stared at me for a couple of seconds, and after that, then he stopped looking at me, would not look up, at, look up at me, and that's when I thought, he's done now. He that's knows right. he's not. It was very confident. intimidating, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But th I think one of the biggest shocks of the night was not the 39-second win, but was that Joe Goosen was out of denim. <laughs> 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 and, he, he, and he looks, he looks well. Look well, at that tracksuit; it's unbelievable. Well, yeah, I gotta thank uh, Robert, the commissioner. Robert Davis yeah. is it? Robert, Robert Smith. Smith. No, Smith. No, Robert I'm sorry, Davis. Robert Smith, and for for forcing my hand on it. But you know, we'll see if I can lobby and maybe yeah. next fight. Yeah. Any other questions, gang? Is this now a permanent thing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, look. Um, obviously, I hope Virgil gets better. Um, I had to. We had to make the move quick. Um, so. Um, I had to call Joe. I've always been watching Joe the way he trains his fighters. I mean, it wasn't an easy camp. It was a very hard camp, and we had like five weeks to work with each other. On the sixth week was the fight, so we couldn't really do much on the fight week. But I like the way he's training me. I like the way he's pushing me, and I think that's what I need at this uh, at this part of my in my career. I need someone to be on me. I mean, um, it didn't feel it feels right now, but a couple of weeks before it didn't feel right. I've always Joe was always watching me, would not take his eye off me, so I have to make sure I do everything perfect. Otherwise. He's gonna tell me off, and sometimes you need that as a fighter. You know, what I mean, I've had some trainers in the past who wouldn't do that. They'd be too busy around other fighters. But with Joe, um, I like the way he trained me today, and also like you know like Tony Brady as well. I like when trainers and strength conditions work together because that helps the fighter as well. You know, what I mean, it, it makes things easier for me, and I like that way that they both communicate because they want the best for the fighter, basically. Mm -hmm. Joe, is telling Khan to look at the Greco? Is that something that's specific for? Amir, or just what you like your fighters? No, no, I, I, I would say it's it's a smart thing to do, wh who's ever in the ring, uh, for any fighter, because what, you know, there's certain, like in poker, there's certain tells, you know, you're going to see something, you're going to see uh, something you like, 
that you may not have spotted before just in the way the guy's warming up or where you might see a spot on his body you, you might say you know there's where i'm going to go to because it looks vulnerable so you never know what you're going to see and then you know you need to focus completely on the guy who wants to knock you out you know so that you can't be waving to the crowds you can't be looking around you're just seconds away from an intense battle against somebody who wants to knock you out so why not focus on that guy see if you can spot something in those few minutes you've got to do it you know when the chips are on the table and uh, I think uh, there's a little gamesmanship psychologically attached to it as well and um, you know I think Amir said it he goes I thought I won the fight right there so tactically it worked for Amir there's a few th- I went in the fight to go longer obviously can't be that good shot but I, I didn't <laughs> I didn't want it to go any longer no, was was, the perfect. reason I wanted it to go for a little bit longer was because I wanted to see the stuff that we've been working on we did a lot of inside <laughs> fighting blocking shots staying in the pocket throwing, yeah. loop, uh, throwing the uppercut shots a lot of the defensive side we worked on as well mm-hmm. and the only way of I mean sparring uh, I t- we did amazing in sparring I could see that a lot of things were working well mm-hmm. my hands were going back up again um, whereas normally I'll just go in wide open <laughs> And, and get caught with silly shots, but so I went seeing further in the fight how I was gonna cope under a little bit of pressure with the same, with the game plan that Joe's taught me. But look, um, we go back to the gym. Hopefully, take a couple of weeks off. I'll be back in the gym again. I got Ramadan coming up as well. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy my break now, and uh, my, my wife's expecting. So hopefully, any day now she's gonna be popping a baby. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be stuck. I'm gonna be babysitting then. So, so yeah, thank you. Good so, timing. Good timing. Yeah, good ti- timing's yeah, been perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, I didn't want to stress the missus out, so I had to get this guy out of the way <laughs> quick because I thought I can't stress her out. She's, she's, you know what I mean? so, um, but yeah, look, it's time to go home now and relax. And I'm back. The main thing is I'm back. People kept tweeting me, messaging me. Um, that I stopped answering questions on Twitter because people kept asking me, when you fighting again? We want to see you fight again. And I think the best move I made was to join Sky and join Matchroom because this is where I want to be and I want to fight in England more often. Um, still love to fight in America because you know that's where the big fights are as well. You can do that too. You can do that as well. Yeah, yeah. But now um, it's time to now see where the ne- what the next step is, and I'm just happy with my performance, and I want to thank everyone for turning up and being being there today. Thank Eddie, you. not only are you probably one of the best promoters in the world right now, everyone's flocking to you, but you're also a fan of the sport. For you, one fight for Khan, if it was next, what would it be? The next one. <coughs> Um, <laughs> no, I, I, listen. I love the Kel. I love the Kel Brook fight. I've always loved the Kel Brook. I think it's just, uh, the only thing, the thing about the Kel Brook fight is it's such a brilliant fight, technically yeah. as well. They're both brilliant, and the styles are very different. Fight, yeah, it's yeah. like, but you know, Kel's like a, a, a like a sharp block, but Ami is so fast. They can both punch. It would. Just, I love putting on huge events, and yeah. that is Kel's very event. robotic. I mean, no, yeah, that's the yeah. very. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, it's very awkward very for me now. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> you put both of yeah, yeah, yeah. You put yeah, both of us, but look, he, he's robotic and look, he's a good fighter. He's got far, but I don't think he'd, he'd, he'd cope with the speed, the movement, and everything. And being a polished up fighter now, you know, I've changed. When I've lost fights, when I've made mistakes, I've changed my whole setup, changed my trainer. And boys, <laughs> Kel's always stayed there. Kel's always going to be Kel. He's a good fighter. I mean, not limited. He's a good fighter. Look, he's, a, he's won a world title. Respect to him there. So I mean, if the fight ever happens, it would be big. I mean, look, you can see the the, the crowd out there how how they were cheered, cheering about it. So let's see, man. Look. Eddie, at this moment in time, is it a stadium fight, Brooke? Yes, it's a Wembley Stadium fight. It, it became it tonight. Yeah. To be honest, I mean, it it's always been massive. Like I said, things happen. It becomes you sort of start thinking. Oh, do you just do it in the MEN or do you do it at Bolton or... And then after tonight, you just stick it straight in Wembley and it does 90,000 like that. So, we'll see. All right, guys, thank you so much for your support. Well done, Eric. Yeah,